Let's all take a deep breath. Right. <sighs> I did this. You tried that. You copy me. That's my sweat. That's my style. Give it back. Three words. Hey creeps and welcome back to my channel as you already know you can't sit with me unless you are P.O.P. And that is pretty on purpose. How you doing? Okay, so y'all we are going to do another 10 episodes today Let's try to get through this thing as fast as we can cuz yeah So we already are at the part where you know, she done moved him in she got pregnant got a miscarriage He done lied about trying to find a house twice. He done messed up with the cars Uh, What now? So she just really sticking with him right now. Like, she just like, okay, it is what it is, whatever. And that's where we at. She know that he done moved from California to here, got a new job, allegedly got a VP situ uh, position. Uh, what else? She, she know he got two stepchildren, 17 and whatever. Ain't met his sisters. Well, one, I think. Whatever. Let's just see what the hell this heifer got going on. All right. Grab your popcorn. Buckle your seatbelts. Cause they say it's supposed to get a little bit more rough. All right. All right. Part 11. Here we so go, for this part, I'm just going to give you some backstory on the family. Okay. Pause all the stuff about the house. Pause the stuff about the car. This is backstory on his family. My ex-husband's family. Here we go. All right. Follow me. We try. My ex-husband's parents, mom and dad are both deceased. Mm -hmm. Mom passed away from cancer. Ooh. Um, dad passed away shortly after her. I'm not sure what he passed away from. So he has a number of siblings. He has two with his parents. He has, um, two siblings, uh -huh. two brothers, excuse me, two brothers. One is older, lives in Philly. One is younger by two years, lives in Nashville. It's just all he has over. two sisters. One, Shantae, is older, lives in Douglasville with her husband and two kids, a boy and a girl. Younger sister, Kim, is the baby, lives in Augusta with her husband, worked at, I think he told me, Procter & Gamble. Uh -huh. That was the story. He had two half-brothers that yeah. were through his dad. This is an orphanage, One it? brother lived in Baltimore. The other brother lived in Augusta. That's a red the brother flag. that lived in Augusta, I have physically met in person, shook hands, hugged, all that. Okay. The brother that lived in Baltimore, I have FaceTimed with, talked to him. Okay. The brother that lived in Philly, the older brother that he looked up to, I have never talked to him on the phone. I would always talk to him um, through my through my ex-husband. So the conversation would be like, hey, babe, uh, brother, brother so-and-so said, hey, he didn't call him brother so-and-so. We'll call him John. John <laughs> said, hey. Okay. Hey, John. I would be in the bathroom doing my hair, brushing my teeth. Hey, John. And he'd be like, did you hear? He said, how you doing? I was like, I'm good. How's he doing? Because um, that's just me. Mm -hmm. And so he would relay back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, he talked to John every day from starting around July after the grandmother passed away. Uh -huh. He would talk to John every morning. We both would be getting ready for work and he would be on the phone with John. They would be talking for 30, 40 minutes, talking about football, talking about other siblings. They would be talking about cars they talk i mean it was it was really like not a big deal they would talk about the brother in baltimore they would talk about the brother in augusta and then they would they would reminisce this is the conversations i could hear uh -huh. let me explain when i say i can hear a conversation what that means you is hear him i am physically standing near him or next to him where i could hear him uh -huh. with the phone up to his ear talking to someone because it wasn't me i'm sorry i just okay when, i may not hear the other person because the phone call may not be on speakerphone i can still but hear what somebody I hear is um for example i hear hey man what y'all doing oh for real y'all barbecuing this weekend but i can still what hear people when i'm standing beside somebody oh that's what's up 
Nah, I think me and her are gonna stay in this weekend because you know. And he never these used numbers speakerphone. is looking crazy with COVID. Yeah, she over here. She's just sitting right here. She watched the TV. Okay, hold on. John said, "Hey, hey, John." See, I'm the type to be like, "Give Murder. me that phone." Hey, John, what's going on? When we gonna see you? All right, bro. I just wanted to check in on you. That's the type of conversation I'm explaining. Girl. Okay, so I hope that that gives a little more clarity about the type of conversations I'm hearing. So, um, I don't know why this light keeps going. Out. Girl, you don't know a lot of things. <laughs> um, apparently. Okay. So that's the that's how he would talk to his siblings. Mm -hmm. The grandmother passed away. He called me around April or May. I'm sure she did. <clears throat> and told me that his grandmother passed away. She probably his grandmother um, on his dad's side. She probably still cooking chicken. Had died somewhere. suddenly from COVID. Okay. She had symptoms. She went to bed and did not wake up. Mm. He was distraught. He was crying. He I wasn't bet. eating. He was just sitting there um, listening to music, not watching TV, just sad. Because mm. he was like, you know, my grandmother was always my my support system. Mm -hmm. So from what I saw, <laughs> right. it really bothered him. I did not think anything of it. I'm, I'm one of those sure. people. If you tell me somebody in your in your family passed away, I'm gonna believe you because I don't play about that. You believe everything, and I guess I expect other people don't either. Um, however, here we go. However, that is not the same for everyone else. But we'll get there. So, family. He talked to his. He had his uh, sister Shantae who lived in Douglasville. Um, like I said, she was married with two kids. Apparently she was a nurse. Mm -hmm. So when I had my miscarriage, that was a sister that he was like, my sister will take you to the hospital. Like that's what family does. Okay. Um, I had never met Shantae. I've been on the phone or excuse me. I've been around him when he was on the phone with Shantae. Never heard her part of the conversation. Um, but you met her. He would be talking to his sister. That's what he said. That's what it sounded okay. like, too. Um, now, what is interesting is that we lived maybe 35, 40 minutes away from Douglasville. Uh -huh. So there were plenty of times that he had invited me to go with him to his sister's house. Okay, let me tell you how this would always work out. Total times he invited me was probably three times for different barbecues or whatnot. The first time he invited me, I was like, no, nah, I ain't going because, again, COVID. And she's a nurse. She got an excuse Hell for no. everything. Um, the second time he was like, yeah, she invited us, but I don't think we should go because COVID. No. The third time, we ag I agreed and to go. You were talking like, about she a I'll nurse having parties sister, during like, COVID. Girl, you making bad decisions um, throughout the beginning way, since March. To her house, to Douglasville, to go see the sister. Um, apparently, he got a phone call. The phone was always like on vibrate, but he got a phone call and he told me that something came up. And so she's she had to cancel the barbecue, the get together, whatever. Um, and so I was just like, oh, man, you know, OK, well, hopefully we can go another time. It was it didn't happen close enough for me to have red flags, if girl, that makes sense. You didn't have um, any in the, at this in point, the as y'all probably are like, girl, you so blind. <laughs> right. But again, I didn't think anything of it because it's like, did. OK, it, it fell through. We'll see. We'll reschedule. Um, And so we just went out to eat and then he talked to another brother the brother from Augusta that he would have on speakerphone. So it was like, you know, I didn't, I didn't think anything of it. I really didn't. Um, man. And the more I talk about it, the more I realize, like, I, I'm, I'm not a dumb person. Girl, if you don't shut the hell up. But it just girl. never dawned on me. Girl. The things that you have to now investigate. Girl, um, no, it just, just it didn't be aware. Me, but nevertheless, that is the backstory. Girl, you gonna for get God again? His family, right? Grandmother passed away. She alive. Three weeks later, he called me and told me his uncle had passed away. He from alive. The uncle had tested positive, had to go into the hospital, and he died. Child, this man's get. Girl. It was um, a bit of a red flag. 
it was a bit of a red flag but like i said i don't play about death so you don't play about i was just like wow <laughs> houses and cars because either, of these apparently. two deaths he became a stickler about covid and when I mean a stickler, wear your mask, wear gloves, hand sanitize, wash your hands. Like he was annoying about making sure neither one of us caught COVID. So now I'm going to give you the backstory in regards to what I was told with the ex-wife. Okay. I know I look rough, but it's okay. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so this is part 12 mm. of who the fuck did I marry? Okay. So this is the backstory on what I was told for the ex-wife this is important oh girl we listening pay attention we've been all right (laughs) this is 2020 so this is what i was told in 2020 i was told that he and his ex-wife used to be friends then they started dating and subsequently got married Mm -hmm. they got married in california Um, He had bought a house with the money that he made from arena football. They had apparently had gotten married on the (laughs) downward of the arena football career. Mm -hmm. Um, Had a nice house. He showed me a picture of the house, showed me pictures inside the house. Remember that? Showed me pictures inside the house. It was a really nice home in San Diego. And... um, Basically, what happened was that he came home from work early one day and caught her cheating. Have the hiccup. Sorry, came home early because you lied. And his wife <laughs> was sleeping with another man. The man was in the house. Mm. He and the man get into it. Mm-hmm. Her son, who um, is about seventeen years old in two thousand twenty, that he had the bond with. Um, she had two kids, a daughter and a son. We the know. son apparently was on his way home from school. Oh, yeah when my ex-husband found his previous wife in bed with another man. Mm -hmm. So the story goes that he and the guy fought. He kicked the guy out. He kicked his ex-wife out, but told her the kids could stay. The kids are not biologically his. Those are his stepkids. Mm. Um, She was like, you must be kidding. Like, I'm not leaving my kids here. The kids are old enough to wear... Um, the they were like, we're, we don't want to go because you fucked up. We don't want to leave. So apparently she leaves. Um, Her children. The kids stay with him for a few weeks. <laughs> and uh, then she gets her own place. The kids move out, move in with their mom. He um, He files for a divorce in California. He files for divorce in California, and it was an ugly divorce. She was asking for spousal support, all kinds of stuff. And then it turned into, um, you know, I'll help you with the kids, not child support, but just I'll, I will give you some money for the kids because apparently he was very close to the kids mm-hmm. and he wanted to keep a relationship with the kids. Their biological fathers, apparently there were two fathers, their biological fathers were not in the picture. So, um, the divorce starts out contested and ugly, eventually becomes amicable. Eventually mm-hmm. they become cordial with each other. So my ex-husband moved. This is all, all before he ever met me. So I'm telling you the story of what I was told in 2020. Mm-hmm. So eventually about two years later is when his job approached him about an opportunity to transfer to Georgia. And so he took it. New beginning, fresh start. He has family in Georgia. He took it. He told me this story pretty much the second or third conversation we had. Okay, that's understandable. Um, So it was always from the beginning that she had cheated. Yeah. He caught her. And um, he left. He had filed for divorce. Okay. But he was still close to the kids. They still had a great relationship. I've heard him. I've heard him. Girl, we know. On the phone with the kids, you know, just encouraging them, helping them, helping the 17-year-old, like, with homework. Um, The kids really apparently wanted to meet me, and I was fine with that. Um, He would, apparently, he would send them money, you know, if they needed something, because he, he loved the kids as if they were his own. I'm telling you the story as I was told it in 2020. 
So if she say that shit see, one more fucking April time. Bitch, we know this. He informs me that his ex-wife has moved to Georgia. Oh. Apparently she's staying with her sister in Gwinnett County. So she has moved to Georgia. The two kids are now in Georgia. And so when he tells me all this, I'm like, so what what's that supposed to mean? Right. Now, I will say this. He never made it seem as if she wants him back. He never presented that. It was always, no, nah, you know, we're we're cool for the kids. We're cool for the kids. Um, but he he's never presented that she was trying to get him back. Right. I feel like it's fair to her for me to say that. Um, and again... Stay with me. It all comes out. Mm. But um, that was the backstory in regards to the ex-wife. That they got married in California. They divorced in California. Mm -hmm. And then she eventually moved to Georgia, to Gwinnett County, after he had transferred to Georgia for his job. Um, He did tell me that, you know, every now and then he'll get a text message from her. Um, he told me that he, you know, told her when I was pregnant, he felt like she needed to hear that from him instead of hearing it from the kids. Mm -hmm. Um, and we got into a bit of an argument about that, but honey, in the big scheme of things that anyway, so we got into an argument about that. I felt like, so you argue about that in her business, but not about the lineup Um, of house and cars, but that's the, the (laughs) overall backstory of her. So remember. (laughs) Because <laughs> there will be a quiz, but just remember, Girl, this he, is not school. Um, met her in California. We married her in California. She repeat the same shit all the fucking time. She moved to Georgia to Gwinnett County after he moved to Georgia. Right? Are we clear? Okay. Okay. So, um, good news and bad news. Number uh, one, this is part fourteen of who the fuck did I marry? Uh, bad news. This is going to be the last post for the night. And the reason why, good news, um, tomorrow's my birthday. So All right. I'm just going to make this video, post it, and then I will pick back up probably Friday. Because honestly, I truly want um, to enjoy my birthday tomorrow. I just, I just want to enjoy my birthday. Um, all right. So y'all don't be upset. <laughs> just if anything watch girl come parts on one through 14 then um we'll be ready for part 15 so the house fell through in october 2020 and what i told him was i said i don't want to look at another house right i don't want to talk about cars <laughs> i want to get through the holidays <laughs> Um, because it was going to be a holiday season where I could not celebrate my family because of COVID. Mm. So I said, I just want to get through the holidays. I want to get through the end of the year. Um, and we'll revisit stuff in January. Yeah, because at this point, where's your I was family? very calm when I said it. They ain't talk no to you. No argument, ain't nothing like nothing. that. Um, and he said he understood. I just... Stress. A lot of what fueled me staying in this situation really was the fact that number one, Lonely. I didn't want to be alone. Told you. Number two, I didn't want to look stupid um, by having the relationship end so quickly for everyone to be like, we told you something was up. Um, and number three, I was ready to get married. And that. So you was desperate and lonely. What? Ready to get married fueled a lot of stuff. Desperate. Um, and again, I was still making my audio diaries. Did so you not listen listening to back them? to it, I knew something was was wrong. I admit that. I knew something was wrong. But what I thought it was, truthfully, was like. <laughs> Why does it seem like there's always something? Because <laughs> like, why can't we just go ahead and get the house? Um, why is it always something? Why can't I just get the BMW? It still didn't dawn on me how deep the something went. And for the people who keep asking, and you was a um, I'm officer? going in order of events. So yes, there will be a video where I explain how everything came out. 
and what came out, what was true, what was not true. It's coming. I'm just getting all of this out in order. So I told him I didn't want to look at a house no more. Um, I don't want to talk about houses. Do not mention the word Zillow. Do not mention the word, <laughs> the word uh, realtor. Nothing. Let me just get through the holidays. And for myself, the question was, what do you want to do? Stay, obviously. You want to stay with him? <laughs> or do you want to cut your losses? <laughs> and the part that kept me constantly second guessing myself was, what if he's not lying? Mm. What if he's not lying? There's no, literally the conversation I had with myself was, there's no way he is lying about having money. You saw, you saw the paper from Chase. They don't just approve $750,000 for a mortgage for anybody. Um, you see, I've seen his checking account. But did you get the house? You see how much money is you get the car checking like you. you, I don't think he's lying. (laughs) I don't think he's lying about that. But what is it? Is it that he doesn't trust me? Like I second guess myself so much. Is that he doesn't trust me? Is it that maybe he doesn't really want to get married? Like, what is it? Because I know what I saw. I know what I heard. I know that he's having conversations about move the money from this account to that account. Um, I know he's paying my car note and all these bills. Like clearly this man is making money. I know that I saw the, the promotional, the letter from HR that states his new salary is 200 and something thousand. Um, and I remember thinking like, God, what, like, what am I missing? I'm missing something. Girl, but what is it? Because I face. know what I've seen. I've no I know what I have touched. I have physically touched these these papers. Like I know how to read. So yes, you've seen documents, but the physical proof was in your he's face close to his every family. time. He talks to them all the time. Oh my God. You know, he's just a regular guy that just likes to watch um NFL football. He leaves me alone when I want to watch Georgia football. Please no police officers hire um, him again. You know, he's paying all he's paying the bills, groceries. I haven't had to worry financially that was since your problem. I've met him. That was your problem. And as a woman who had lived on her own, paying her own bills. That was your problem. My God, that is the most intoxicating feeling when you meet a guy who just takes your stress and your worry away financially. This is why, ladies, you don't depend. He took away the stress and the worry financially away and instead brought a mental fuck job I've never in my life had experienced. And I could not put my finger on it. Because you let yourself go. I couldn't really talk to anybody about it because I'm a big believer in what happens at home stays at home. You isolated you. So I didn't talk to my girlfriends about it. I didn't talk to my family about it. But I I just remember being like... Stupid. Dumb. What am I missing? Ignorant. What am I missing? Foolish. Um, Gullible. So we did not talk about houses. We did not look at cars. We didn't do any of that for November, December. And he came to me like around Thanksgiving. And he, what I thought nice. was a very open, loving conversation. And in that conversation, he was like, okay, I know I have fucked up. I know that things are not feeling too strong right now. He was like, I want us to get married. I want I, I want a home. Mm. Um, I will show you whatever you need to see mm. to put you at ease. Mm. Um, he was very um, like contrite. He was very just like what what do what do I need to do mm-hmm. to put your mind at ease mm-hmm. so that you know I'm in this mm-hmm. and that I want this and that I love you mm-hmm. and I want you to be my wife. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, show me your accounts. All right. He showed me his checking. He showed me. He showed me one of his savings. He showed me a 
Chase savings. Um, he did not show me the offshore. And he did not show me the U.S. bank. What did he show you? So he showed me those two accounts, checking and Chase savings. Uh -huh. So I knew that there was money. What I saw in those accounts, there was money. I told him, I was like, if we're going to buy a house, I want it to be through the mortgage on Chase. I don't want to deal with this proof of fund shit no more. I said, I do not want to look at another house until the beginning of the next, of the new year. He said, okay. That is when we then had a conversation. So I guess I lied because we are going to have a part uh, 15 or 16 tonight. Um, but that is when we then had the discussion about marriage. Mm. And that is where religion came into play. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll give y'all... The other part tonight. Okay. Stand by. What happened to 15? This is the interlude, basically. She's skipping um, shit. I'm not recapping on this video. I'm just kind of answering some stuff that has been written to me. Someone was like, why are you airing your business out on social media? <sighs> it's a valid question. Um, for me personally... I feel like this was traumatic to experience, to live through. Caused by you. Um, and I will and I'll expound on that on another video, the aftermath of the toll that this took. Um honestly, <laughs> and it, I know some people are gonna be like, that sounds crazy. It is kind of cathartic to get this out because I cannot tell you how much of this has been internalized um, since 2020. Also, I don't want to seem like a cautionary tale to other women or to men for that matter, but to my sisters, to my ladies, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, doesn't matter. <clears throat> if something does not sit right with you, investigate it or leave um i cannot stress that enough if just one woman watches these videos and she's like you know what some don't sit right with me let me look into this more sensitive, um, I guess. then it was worth it yes it is a lifetime movie yes it is netflix yes it is crazy yes it is hilarious also um and I understand all of those reactions. As someone who lived it, um, Girl, spit it out. It was traumatic. But I feel like, God, it feels good to finally admit, um, what the fuck I went through and again by the time this is uh, uploaded I'm only to January of 2021 right after getting married so when I think back on it there's things that I'm very very grateful for um, there are things that I'm just like why why did you not pay attention why did you not question? You were lonely, sweetie. Um, and the sad part is, I can't even begin to tell you. I don't remember the woman I was before I met that man. Desperate. I don't remember. Desperate and lost and lonely. Um, you would... Because going through something like that, it changes you. And I've seen some women in the comments just, who were like, I was married to a habitual liar. I was married to a pathological liar. My baby daddy's a, a pathological liar. And my heart goes out to them because until you have dealt with someone so depraved, you, you really don't 
quite know I hear how bad it can get. I hear that, but um, that's why it's always important to instill love. So into I'm yourself. fully aware that this was a risk putting because this out you, on social media. When you love my yourself, story, my truth. You don't allow anyone to love you any different. Really, kind of being like, look, this is this when is you what honestly I honestly love through. yourself. I made dumb decisions. Yes. I overlooked things I should not have overlooked. I argued away things I should not have argued away. Um, yes. I can pinpoint exactly the moment I should have left. Yep. I still feel like God is sitting on the throne and he's like, I never planned for your monkey ass to marry him. <laughs> he didn't. That's why he popped that tire. You on a date with him. That's why I blew your tire. Yeah, hello. But you hard headed <laughs> and you went anyway. <laughs> and then I tried to go ahead and show you signs. You ignored them. Yes. Like, I feel like God did everything. He did. To help me as his child be like, this is not, not. who I created to be your, your helpmate. He was pissed when you said he, he didn't I help you like, with God, that you tire. You're taking too long. I want to get married. you taking too long. I want to have a family. You're taking too long. See? And these are the consequences that I'm paying for basically telling God you took too long. Mm. And um, mm. I feel like God's grace is sufficient. Mm. It is. But at the same time, and I'm not perfect. I mean, not perfect at all. None of us we, are. But you know. I do feel like when I sit back and I replay the events that happened, I truly cannot believe mm-hmm. that was my story. Hello? Because all I wanted was to meet a guy, for him to be my best friend, for us to get married, have a family. I wanted someone I could make fun of his big old forehead, ah. and he make fun of my nappy head and all my wigs, and yet he was my ride or die. Mm. Um, mm. I wanted someone that I could be like, man, help me with these kids. And he helped me with the kids. We had a nice home. We were comfortable. That is what I wanted. Mm. And I've said this before, and I say it again. I truly thought, I truly hoped mm-hmm. it was my turn. Mm. You see the women who are, you know, so happy and, um, you know, they're in these loving marriages and life just looks good. I really, really wanted it to be my turn. Mm -hmm. And so I excused away a lot of stuff that I hope the next woman who sees this does not excuse Mm. because I don't wish this on anybody. Mm. I don't wish this on anyone Mm. to feel the way I felt the moment I discovered the whole truth. I can believe the story now. Um, Because she was just... So I just wanted to say that. She was just... Because I think it's important to try to answer the, why is she posting this? Honestly, she just really wanted love. I was tired of holding it in. Yeah. Um, and I hope it helps somebody. Mm. Okay. All right. Let's all take a deep breath. Right. <sighs> Let's all get some sleep. <laughs> um, if you don't have anything to do and you just want to wish me a happy birthday. Happy birthday. Wish me a happy birthday tomorrow, February 15th. Shout out to Team Aquarius. Good night. <sighs> Part 17. Who All the right. fuck did I marry? So, for context, and just to clarify some stuff, going forward, I'm going to now call my ex husband. <laughs> I'm going to use the name that I call him in real life. Um, so that way it clears up the whole fiance, boyfriend, husband, ex husband thing. So, his name is Legion. Mm. Anyone that knows me will tell you that is what I call him. So Legion and I, when I left off at part uh, 16, um, or excuse me, part 15, Legion and I got married January 5th of 2021. For the first two weeks, things were fine. Um, We got into like a 
a routine, basically. I would go to work, he would go to work. Um, he was still leaving the house at around 6.15 every morning. He was still on the phone with his brother, the one that lived in Philly, um, every morning. They would just, that was their time to talk. In the Bible, From that's a I group of told, demons. The brother got off work, I guess, he must have worked the third shift. And so he was getting off work as Legion was getting ready to go to work. So that was the perfect time for them to talk. Mm. He would talk to um, his brother in Baltimore and the brother in Augusta. Pretty much, you know, just a quick phone call here and there, if not every day, every other day. So everything was pretty much the same. I would talk to my mom almost every day. I would talk to my aunt almost every day. Um, so it was it was nothing to kind of, hmm, that's weird. Um, that's what the morning routine was. He would talk. So I worked at Georgia State Patrol. Um, and I t- said this in a previous video, but again, there were things I said in previous videos that I remember saying, hey, remember that because it's going to come back later. Yeah. So... I worked at Georgia State Patrol. I had been working there for almost eight years, seven or eight years by the time Legion got into the picture. He was fine with the fact that I worked um, within law enforcement. I'm not a trooper. I'm not a sworn officer. I'm a civilian. However, he, um, again, his dad was a retired police officer. So he was perfectly fine in the beginning with the fact that I worked for Georgia State Patrol. Um, He had been to my office before. He had met some of my um, coworkers. Obviously, even with COVID, because I still had to go into the office two or three days a week, he had been up there. So the friend who took me to the hospital when I had my miscarriage has met him. He and I have been to her home with her and her significant other before. So again, even in the world of COVID, when there were little times where you could get together with people, he has met people in my life. He has met um, my friend or that particular friend, and he has met some of my coworkers. Mm-hmm. So when we got married, the first two weeks, like I said, was fine. And then it's as if something snapped, um, something just changed. What was totally acceptable before, Mm -hmm. suddenly little comments were made. Why are you wearing that to work? (laughs) You get off at 3.30, so you'll be home by 5, right? Mm. Things that had never happened before. He had never questioned what time I'm going to be home. Um, He on you. Really, he didn't need to question it because when I'm off work, I, I leave. So... It was never a situation of, oh, I'm just sit around at work and just run my mouth because I have nothing to do. Um, and then it turned into, you know, he would call me every day mm-hmm. from work. And I'm going to demonstrate how those phone calls went. But he would call me every day from work. And if he even so much as heard mm. a male voice in the background, he would have little comments to me. Who was that? Are they in your office? You know, man, you know, I never know who's who's around you because mm. it seemed like every time I call you, I have the hiccup, sorry. Come on. It seems like every time I call you, um, there's some man around. Oh, he cheating. And I'm just like, he you know, at first I kind of shrugged it off. I laughed it off. Because he cheated and breaking you really, down. It really, truly was absurd to me. Um, but then it became a bit more frequent. And so I really just didn't feed into it because I'm like, I don't know if this is some insecurity. I don't know if this is jealousy because nothing has ever been done to make you feel any sort of insecure type of way. I've never entertained another guy, never flirted with another guy. Like, I don't know where this is coming from. Mm -hmm. So it is also important to note, we got married January 5th. Things started changing Um around two weeks later and the reason why i know it's two weeks is because i had recorded an audio diary on january 21st is the date of the audio diary and i talk about how maybe i had unrealistic unrealistic expectations because it seemed as if things were changing with he and i 
So two weeks pass, he starts making little comments. End of January comes, he informs me that he wants to start looking for a house again. I had no real desire to go through that process. So what he decides is that he's going to look for a house for us using his friend, the uh, realtor, the one I did not meet. Mm -hmm. So he tells me that he and his friend have been talking Mm -hmm. and he's going to start looking at houses. And what he's going to do is basically if he feels like it's a house I would like, then he wants to show it to me Mm -hmm. because he feels like, you know, I know that your attitude really isn't you're in the mood to look for a house. So I'm going to start looking. And then if I think it's a great house, then, you know, you can come see it. Mm. Um, And I remember thinking, that's not like, that's not going to work. You're not going to choose a house without me. He was like, no, I'm not going to choose the house. But I just think that, you know, me and old boy have been talking. And so he has some houses that he is representing. He wants to show me. So why don't you let me look at it? And if it's worth the time, then I'll bring you to look at it. Mm -hmm. So he already had some sort of plan in place after talking to his friend um, about how he's going to start looking at houses. This is Jan- This is the end of January, mm-hmm. 2021. So I kind of threw my hands in the air and was just like, whatever, because I'm not getting emotionally involved in looking at houses. And for me, that's kind of what it was. I felt like I would see a house, I could picture us living there, and then it gets snatched away somehow, some way. I didn't want to go through that. So the reaction that he wanted, which was for me to throw a fit, I did not do. I was just like, okay, all right. Like, I trust you. Mm -hmm. Um, And remember that I said the reaction he wanted, because that's going to come back later. So he started looking at houses. Funny enough, the houses that he looked at, none of them I actually saw. But he would call me and say, I'm at this house in Sandy Springs with the uh, realtor <laughs> friend. He, apparently, his realtor his realtor friend's name was Scott. Not to be confused with the other Scott, the one that was actually helping us, that dropped us as clients. I want to <laughs> make that clear. There were two Scotts. Okay. One is the realtor who was representing us who said, hey, I need proof of funds. If you don't have those proof of funds, I cannot show you any more houses. The other Scott is his friend who he had talked to on the phone at least 50 to 100 times. How are there no proof of of funds, but he showed you the money that he had in his bank account? That's the Scott that he said is going to show me this house in Sandy Springs. Um, apparently the house was like $800,000. So he was like, I think that, um, if I, you know, if I like the house, then I'm bringing you out here so you can see it. All right. Mm. Now let's go into part 18. Mm. Okay. Part 18. Who the fuck did I marry? Mm. So he starts looking at houses in Sandy Springs, Alpharetta area with his friend, Scott. Um, I did not see any of these houses. I did not go. I didn't want to go. Um, So what was starting to change is, remember I said before, he would leave the house every day at around 6.15. He would be home every day between 3.30 and 4 o'clock without fail. It was so, I shouldn't say it was annoying, but I could set my clock by the fact that I would hear that garage door open between 3.30 and 4 o'clock. In the Every day that he went to work, uh. even during lockdown, he still had to go to work. His job was only locked down for maybe a week. Um, for me, I was allowed to work from home, but unfortunately, I I did not handle it well. And so I would fall asleep and not check email. So my boss was like, yeah, you're going to have to come back to the office because <laughs> you're not trustworthy. And I wasn't. I mean, I totally. I would watch Netflix and not even be on my computer, so. I had to start going back to work every day, five days a week. Irresponsible, um, just like your life. And I was, <laughs> me and another lady were the only two in there because we were the only two who did not handle work from home properly. Anyway, that's another story. So we don't Legion want it. would, he started to not come home by four o'clock. Oh. He started to come home 
five, oh. five thirty, oh. six, oh. six thirty, sometimes oh. seven o'clock. Oh. Because he was saying that he was um, looking at houses after work with his friend Scott. Mm. So it definitely was noticed that things are changing. Mm. Um, and I just, at this point, kind of emotionally and mentally, I was just like, I don't know what to do. This is the end of January. Remember, I told you in part 15, I got married January 5th. By January 31st, I kind of knew I was in trouble. <laughs> and by the end of January, sure enough, I knew things were changing in a way that I was like, I hate to sound redundant, but what the fuck is going on? So he's still maintaining the story of looking for a house, looking for a house. And you still got I had married? already let him know my lease is up in August. When my lease is up in August, I am moving to Cobb County. Um, <laughs> and then my attitude was kind of like, you can go with me or you can stay here. I don't care, but I'm moving. I'm leaving Clayton County. So you should have did it the in the get-go. The reason why I, want, I was so adamant to move was not because of Clayton County. It was not because of the house of that I was in. It was because Legion had started to create this narrative that he was beefing with my female neighbor. He was trying to get me to believe that my female neighbor to the left of me um, somehow was interested in him. Oh, and Jesus. so she would make these little comments and he would come in the house complaining about her and her music and the fact that she had, you know, different men over to the house. It was driving me crazy. And all of this was kind of starting in January. But why would so he when care? I say that she it really seems there. like we got married January 5th and then we had two weeks of peace and then something just snapped. I literally mean something just snapped. So he's looking at houses. Now we're moving into February. February obviously is my birthday month. Um, it's he almost did a good. year. He did good to make Valentine. He went all out for Valentine's Day. He went all out for my birthday. My birthday and Valentine's Day are February 14th and February 15th. So um, he went all out on both days. <sighs> Y'all ain't even going to believe this story. Girl. But I said I would share even when it makes me look bad. So. The weekend after my birthday. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is if my birthday was on a Tuesday, we're talking about Saturday. Um, the weekend after my birthday, he gave me money to go to the nail salon, mm -hmm. go get a manicure and pedicure. So I leave the house. I take his car. His car was in the driveway. We had a key to each other's car because, again, we're married at this point. Mm -hmm. We're talking February 2021. So I take his car and I drive to the nail salon over in Morrow. I'm in the chair getting a pedicure and I get a text message from my husband saying someone was just at the house looking for you. Mm -mm. And I'm like, who was looking for me? What do you, well, who was it? And he said, I don't know. I think it was some, this is through text. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it was some dude you used to mess with. Oh. Okay. Um, I was like, what are you talking about? He's, and he was like, I'm telling you, some guy just came to the house looking for you. I told him you were not here. So at this point, y'all, I'm in the chair at the salon. I'm freaking out because I'm like, who the fuck? has the audacity to come to my home unannounced, uninvited, mm -hmm. talking about they're looking for me. Right. Especially because before I met my husband, I was working I was working the last shift at Amazon as a part-time job. So I had not dealt with, dated anything with anyone for about a year mm -hmm. before I met him in March of 2020. So I really was like, who the hell is this coming to my house? 
Girl, so, you just don't know anything. I finish the pedicure. I head home. Once I get home, I'm like, what What are you talking about? What happened? And so I'm frazzled in a way. And he's calm. He was like, yeah, it was a black Dodge Charger. They pulled into the driveway. They backed in. They backed in as if they had been here before. So clearly this was someone who, who, who's been to your house. He got out the car. He said, I opened the door and I went out there and I said, you know, is there something I can help you with? And he said, the guy said, I'm looking for and gave him my name. That was a cop. And he said, I'm sorry, she's not here. Undercover. And he said, he was like, oh, okay. Um, all right, then. And just got in the car and drove off. And I was like. Right. That's weird. My brain stopped working. Because I'm thinking, who the heck could this be? A Dodge Charger? I was like, are you sure that it wasn't law enforcement? Like, right. was the sheriff's office trying that's to serve I'm, me with a lawsuit for a credit I'm card thinking. I didn't pay? He was like, no, he was in regular clothes. He was like, and it was not a, um, a, a police car. It was on a marked unit, basically. Mm. And so I'm just like who the heck could this be? And he was like, I know who it was. And I said, who? He was like, I think it was your ex. What? Sir? I said, what ex? Exactly. He was like, the one that you had dated for two years. Remember back in like part three, part four, I told y'all, he told me about his ex. I told him about mine. Mm -hmm. I thought we were being honest with each other. So now fast forward to February 2021 and he's telling me yeah it, I think it was the ex that you have been dealing with for those two years before you met me I said so you think that he showed up to the house uninvited after two years and he was like well whoever it was clearly was comfortable pull, backing into our driveway getting out the car and was like I'm here to see and gave me gave him my name mm -hmm. um and so he was like, she's not here. Is there something I can help you with? And the guy was like, no, nah, no, nah, it's cool. Um, and then just got in the car and drove off. So, uh, again, brain is like, who who could this be? So then Legion says to me, you know what? The way that you react into this is real suspect. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He was like, you over here freaking out. I told you I took care of it. I told you it was fine. And you over here freaking out, which makes me wonder, what are you, what have you been up to? Oh. Now, let's go to part 19. Who do y'all okay. think it part is? Part 18, who the fuck did I marry? Mm -hmm. So he says to me, the way you're acting is real suspect because I told you it was fine. I took care of it. He was like, I ain't even worried about it. He was like, obviously that nigga didn't know that you now married, that you've moved on. And so now he knows it. Mm. But for me, it was the fact that I don't do dry. I don't do pop-ups. Don't come to my house unannounced. Right, so if that. someone has done that, for me, it, it automatically feels like a violation. It. And it feels like it needs to be addressed. So it was not as simple as, I already took care of it. It's fine. Let it go. Nah, we ain't letting nothing go. Because you don't have my permission to show up to my house. And before this turns into something where I'm going to be on Fox 5 News, I need to address that with you because that is not okay. Yeah. So he didn't like the reaction I had to the story he told me where someone basically disrespected my home. And he felt like my reaction was really suspect. So um, what I'm going to get into the little details that he did not know about. So he tells me again, it was a black charger, mm -hmm. a black Dodge charger they backed into the driveway. A gentleman got out of the car and he asked for me by name. And Legion said, she's not here. So um, I asked him, what does the guy look like? Mm -hmm. And he said, he was like, why does it matter? I said, what the fuck does he look like? Yeah. So Legion proceeds to give me the most generic description you can give. He was like, well... Um, he was shorter than me. Ex-husband is about six, three, six, four. He was shorter than me. Um, he was brown skin. I said, did he, ha did he have a hat on his head? 
Mind Man, you, you gassy. I understand that before marriage, I was a damn fool. I understand that. But every woman has that moment where you only going to fool her but for so long. It- and eventually stuff, puzzles start coming together. For me, I felt like moving into marriage, certain things started coming together. So I said to him, um, did he have a hat on his head? He was like, nah, he ain't wear a hat. So in my mind, I am mentally going down a list of every possible man it could be. Um, and it was only like four men. I had been in that house about three or four years at this point. So I knew all of the people and I'm talking about from maintenance down to ex-boyfriends. It was a total of like four men. Mm -hmm. So when he said that um, it was a black charger, I immediately was like, okay, I know that crosses out one. He said he was shorter than him. All of them were shorter than him. I said, did he have a hat on his head? He said, no, that crossed out one because one in particular was a maintenance guy who always wore a hat on his head because he had like a bruise or something and he he was just self-conscious about it. So he always wore a hat. That leaves two. So I said, was he muscular or was he skinny? Mm -hmm. So Legion's getting all frustrated. I said, just answer the question. He was like, well, he was kind of in between. And I said, okay, um... He was in between. I said, so was he light skin or was he dark skin? He was like, I told you he was brown skin. I said, was he my complexion? He said, no, he was he was brown skin. That eliminates one. So now there's one left. Mm-hmm. And yes, the one left would have been the ex that I had dated for two years. Mm. And so he was like, I know that, that I know it was your ex. I know it was your ex. And I was like, that don't make no sense because the ex that I... In my mind, I'm saying this. The ex that I had dated, he and I had no contact with each other. And he was not the type to just pop up at your house. That ain't his style. Not to mention, Maybe God was and I ain't tell Legion this, that man would not be caught dead driving a Dodge Charger. He hated Chargers because he drove it as a patrol car. So I didn't say anything. I just was like, that's that's weird. So what Legion didn't know is that at the time I had a security system. Oh. So I had a security system where um, anytime the front door, the garage door or the back door was open, basically any entry point, anytime it was open or closed, it would send me a text message notification. So when he's telling me all this, I'm looking at my phone and I see... A notification where the front door was opened and it was shut all within the same minute. So, mm. for example, if it says front door open at 1 p.m., front door closed at 1 p.m. So whatever he did was within those 60 seconds. Yeah. He's telling me the story of the guy got out the car. Um, he opened the door. He went out there. Can I help you? And the guy said, um, I'm looking, I'm looking for, for you. And Legion said, no, she's not here. And so he said the guy kind of was like, okay. And he was like, all right, thank you. And got in the car and drove off. That's a minute. Legion has also told me that he watched him drive off, drive out of the neighborhood, which means because of the way the house was set up, the townhouse, he would have still been outside watching this. I could be wrong, but something in me was like that would take more than 60 seconds. So for the door to have been open and shut within the same 60 seconds, I was like, that's not the story mm. you said earlier. You didn't say that he mm. said he watched him leave the complex. Okay. So also what he didn't know, we didn't have a ring door camera, but my neighbor did. And her ring door camera caught my driveway. It, it, the view of the camera so could now see my driveway. You an well investigator now, but you weren't investigating um, at the beginning. So who, whoever was coming yeah. out, our driveways were right next to each other, and then on the either on the other side of it was the grass. Mm-hmm. So it was a per, it was a perfect view of my driveway. Mm-hmm. So, so she, um, I had texted her and I said, "Hey, were you home?" Um, I think I texted her the next day because I said, "Were you home on Saturday?" Da 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 da. 
And she said, um, no, I wasn't. What's up? You know, everything good. And I said, um, can you look at your security system and see if there was a car that came to my house um, at such and such time? And I know I, I did not tell her the reason I was asking, but I was like, is there any way that your security camera caught if someone came to my house um, at this time on Saturday? She's like, yeah, sure, I'll look. And so <laughs> maybe about a couple of hours later, she texted me back and said, hey, I looked at the camera, but I didn't see anything. Oh. And I said, okay, by any chance, did it catch if someone maybe walked up the driveway? Like maybe it wasn't a car in the driveway, but someone walked up. She said, I didn't see anything with your driveway yesterday. So I said, okay. Um, and I, and I knew, I knew that something in me again, um, was like, nobody came to the house. What if he's schizophrenic? So now here we are, um, a month and a half married. And now is when I'm like, why the fuck did he make that up? Because no one came to the house. (laughs) No black charger came to the house, pulled back into the driveway. Nobody got out the car and asked for me. Mm. Nobody was looking for me. Mm. So now I'm, I was sitting in the bedroom thinking through all this. And I'm like, my ex did that before. Why the fuck did he make that up? Yeah. Because that's what happened. I'm looking at the text messages on my phone where he's telling me someone just came to the house looking for you. Mm-hmm. But no one came. Mm-hmm. So what was the purpose of that? And then I re- and then something said to me, something in me said, he wanted to see your reaction. He he just wanted to see the reaction. You had been too calm, and so he wanted to see a reaction. So this man gaslit me like I was Georgia natural gas just to get <sighs> a reaction. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to part twenty mm. of who the fuck did i marry (laughs) don't get mad now don't get mad now. all right part 20 of who the fuck did i marry so after the black dodge charger incident um things were were quiet Mm. legion was fine legion slept just fine me that shit played over in my head for days and days and days um on one hand (laughs) i was like i know nobody came Mm -hmm. My head knew nobody came to the house. My heart was like, but maybe he didn't make it up. So the head and the heart were absolutely playing a tug of war. Because, again, I really couldn't fathom that he was making it up. But nevertheless, I filed it in the back of my mind. And my little filing cap, my, my mental filing cabinet. So a few weeks later, we go out to eat at this restaurant in Atlanta. Um, is a burger place and I'm going to do my, my best by the time I post this to put the name of the burger place, um, on the screen. So we go to the burger place, eat dinner. Everything was fine. As we are leaving, he says to me, did I ever, did, did I ever show you where my grandmother's buried? This is the grandmother that passed away from COVID Uh in 2020. And I said, no, I was like, we haven't been over here. And so he was like, let me, let me show you. So (laughs) <laughs> he drives us to the cemetery, which is not far from the restaurant. Mm. He drives us to the cemetery, goes around and around, and then it comes to um, like a little hill in the cemetery. And he was like, you see the headstone. The headstone had um, like a fam- the family name on it. And it did not have, for example, John David Doe. It just had Doe. Okay. So there were no dates on it. So it it reminded me of just a headstone where it was probably multiple family members buried underneath it. That's what it reminded me of. And so he was like, my grandfather and my grandmother are buried there. I do recall him telling me when the grandmother died in 2020 that she wanted to be buried next to his grandfather. And so he told, he, he we're sitting in the car because we can see the headstone like on top of the hill from the car. And he tells me that that is where his grandmother and grandfather are buried, that he was able, the family was able to get her um, 
you know, her wishes were to be buried next to the grandfather. She says okay. the same thing over and over. So as we are leaving, we take a different route home. Mm. So we get on the highway. If you're from Atlanta, you'll know what I'm talking about. We get on I-75 North. Um, and we're kind of just, ta- we're just driving around, to be honest with you. Right. But we're taking the scenic route. We get on I-75 North because the reason why I remember is because when you're on I-75 North going towards Atlantic Station, right. on the right-hand side, you will see the varsity. You'll see all these tall skyscraper buildings. One of the buildings has the letters NCR on the building. We, As we're coming up towards the building, he says to me, do you see the NCR building? I said, yeah. He said, the building behind it my job bought that building that's where we're going to have um we're setting up operations and i was like why the hell would y'all buy a condiment company in downtown atlanta he was like no we're not doing production there it's just going to be offices and that's where we're going to handle like the business portion the production is still being done in gwinnett county out in duluth and so i was like oh okay he was like that's where i keep the company car so i was like the company car i said aren't you supposed to be bringing a company car home and he was like i don't want to bring the company car home because it's clayton county and it's a ninety thousand dollar car and i don't know i don't want no i don't want no problems so he's telling me that he keeps the company car at the build the building downtown atlanta that's behind the ncr building I barely could see what building he's talking about. But he was like, it's the building right behind it. And so he's telling me that that's where his office is. So I said to him, take me to your office. Oh, I know it's a Saturday, but shit. I want to see. You wanted the VPs, right? Right. So take me to your office. No, I had not been to his office simply because, again, COVID. So I was like, take me to your office. And he was like, he was like, I can. He was like, that's no problem. So... Do I have the other phone? I do. So y'all are in luck. So I can maybe reenact how this goes. So he gets off the exit and starts driving towards the NCR building. While he's driving towards the NCR building, he always has kept his phone in his left pocket. This is my left hand. So he pulls his phone out and he starts calling. He tells me he's calling Willie. Willie is supposed to be the head of security. So he's saying, oh, let me call Willie real quick to make sure that the building's open. Uh-huh. So he proceeds. This is another phone. But he proceeds to go ahead and call Willie. He's still, We're still driving, by the way. We're still driving. I'm on the phone, you know, scrolling through Facebook, trying to figure out um, some random shit. But he's, he's driving. Driving with the phone. Next thing I hear, hey, Willie, it's Legion. Mm-hmm. Hey, how's it going? I'm good. Hey, is the building open? No, I just want to take my wife up there so she can see it and see my office. Are you up there right now? You're not? (laughs) Okay, is Mr. Justin working? He's not. Okay. So is there anybody up there that can physically (laughs) open the building? Because I don't think my badge is going to get me at least in the front door because of it's, it's on the weekend lock. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me know. All right. Thank you, Willie. Bye. Y'all see how I did that? He's having this whole conversation while I'm sitting in a passenger seat. So then he gets off the phone and he says to me, Willie is not working and Justin apparently called out sick. So the building is locked and my badge won't get us in the front door. Damn. He was like, Willie's going to see if there's someone else that can open the that can open the front door so we can actually get in. He's like, my badge will get us on the floor, but it will not get us in the front door. Mm. <clears throat> no one ever called. So when he's getting off the highway, um, he basically turns onto Spring Street. Again, there's this, there's all kinds of shit I distinctly remember. He turns onto Spring Street so that he can then get on 75 South so we can go home. Right. Never saw the office that day. Mm. Um, but again, this is where he's saying that he um, keeps the company, the company car. car. 
So when we get to part 21, I'll kind of go into detail about the whole company car a little bit more. Mm. All right, you guys, we made it to story number 20. I'm going to stop there and we'll do 10 more tomorrow. Um, I'm glad she's starting to realize something's not right. Because, you know, in the beginning, she was very much gullible. She was stupid. Uh, she was just lonely looking for a man. And then, you know, after a while it gets like frustrating when like what you wanted and then you got something, is not what you were asking for? Like you said, you did not want to have your baby in Riverdale, but you ended up getting pregnant, but you didn't have the baby. You said you want to be moved by the end, but you wasn't, but you got your husband. You know, that's why, that's why when you ask God for stuff, you have to ask God for the stuff in its entirety. Is that the right word or entirety? You have to ask God for it in full, a good man, a man that's honest, loyal, protecting, trustworthy, strong, independent, you know, um, supplying, you know, everything. You got to say everything. She just wanted a man, a baby, and to move. That's what she said, and that's what she got. So you just got to just be careful. What did I rub off this thing? But anyway, I still am kind of like on the edge, like, is she telling the truth? Or are they both just a hot mess? But all right, God only made one you. If you don't be you, then nobody else will. Until then, cue to me.